A wall is a system family, which means a wall is defined by a type, and that type only exists in the project model. Revit has an additional system family that is only hosted by a wall element. Wall foundations are the primary element used to provide a footing that will stick to a wall and can be centered or offsetted as needed. The obvious first step is to have a wall in which to put a wall foundation under. In our dataset project, there are a number of walls. We have corner conditions as well as openings and ends. The trick with wall foundations is to leverage them properly. We start on the home ribbon. From the foundation panel, click the wall tool. Then move into the drawing area and pick a wall. Revit does the rest and place the wall foundation on the wall according to its type properties. At that point, you can continue picking on walls and placing them one at a time. If you had many wall foundations to place as quickly as possible, you could use the Select Multiple tool and then Window Select as many walls as you wish. Since a wall must be a host to a wall foundation, Revit knows if a given wall is already hosting a foundation. Therefore, you cannot place more than one wall foundation on a single wall. The placement on the wall itself is all handled by the type properties of the wall foundation. However, you can make adjustments at the end of the wall foundations. Zoom in on a wall end and click the wall foundation. Once selected, Revit displays drag controls at the end of the wall foundation. Click and drag the control. As you do, Revit will display temporary dimensions. You can then type in 2 feet or 600 millimeters as the extension length. When you have a wall foundation selected, the properties palette will populate with the instance settings of the wall foundation. Although the type properties are where you should control wall foundation placement relative to the host wall, you can, as needed, use the eccentricity parameter to move the footing. Assigning a positive value will slide the footing center line off from the exterior face. Assigning a negative value will slide the center line off from the interior face. To make changes to the footing geometry from the Properties palette, click the Edit Type button. From the Type Properties dialog, you can see the default concrete material is assigned. The Structural Usage property is set to Bearing for footings that are to be centered on the host wall. Clicking the property, you can set to Retaining. Doing so then replaces the Width parameter with the Toe and Heel. The toe property is measured from the exterior face of the wall, and the heel property is from the interior face. Go ahead and change the toe value to 6 inches or 150 millimeters, then change the heel value to 2 feet or 600 millimeters. Further down is a default property for the end extension length. This can be used if you typically want to set an extension distance. The last option to note is do not break at inserts. Generally, this is preferred to be enabled. This will force Revit to continue the footing under openings that are wall hosted, such as doors with no threshold wall material. Click OK to close the Type Properties dialog. Now that the Type Properties has changed, the wall footings are no longer centered under the walls. Using wall foundations are very useful since they automatically attach themselves to wall elements.